Welcome to another episode of Data, everyone. Thank you guys very much for joining me. I am excited for the guest that I have on today because he's got a phenomenal program for not only parents, but also for kids, really for kids to really learn about the basically the fundamentals of money and how it works. But if you saw the podcast episode last week with my good friend, Lee Benson, uh, he, he wrote a book called Value Creation Kids. And this gentleman here that I have on the show with me is also the co-author of that book, but he's also created an app to kind of, you know, segue, kind of goes along with that book, but kind of segues into another area. And I'm really excited for him to talk about it. But my good friend, Scott Donald has joined me on Dad Up. Welcome to the show, brother. Good to be here. It's a big time. It's important <laughs> for dads and kids to learn these skills, man. Right. Uh, Money's important. Absolutely. And I think it's a, uh, I think it's crucial uh, for kids to learn this stuff because as you and I have talked, we've talked, we have had a couple of conversations, but you and I have talked about this. Uh, this is just not taught. It's just yeah. not taught. And even, I mean, you could go as high as college and this stuff is just not taught. Yeah. And where do we learn about money? We learn about money through our experiences and our parents. That's really where we learn about money. And those may not be good, <laughs> good things to learn from. Like your parents, if they're not, if they're not, you know, using their money right and and doing the right things with their with their financial future you're teaching bad habits to your kids even when they're young young kids um, yeah. and i was just i was telling you before we started recording i was just i was telling my wife about this and she's a school teacher and uh she's like wow this is great i'm going to have to share this with the parents uh because the app you have and all that but before we yep. dive into all that i want to know a little bit more about you kind of your back history kind of how you grew up and then obviously how you got into all this and then obviously i want to know about your family as well yeah so uh my i am live in phoenix my wife amy and i we have four beautiful little kiddos um and this is front and center to us we we know that the schools aren't teaching financial skills or critical thinking or practical skills they struggle to teach this stuff and you know, this gravy stack is our app. Um, and it's honestly, this has been a 15 year journey to get here with a bunch of different companies. So, um, you know, I grew up with a lot of this training. Uh, I come from four generations of really successful entrepreneurs, um, that trained us, but never passed on a dime, mm. right? Like it's actually the most amazing way to do it. Mm -hmm. They said, we're going to teach you to fish. But we're not going to turn you into a lottery ticket uh, entitled kid. And I couldn't be more thankful. I have zero imposter syndrome, zero guilt, fear, shame. You know, 90% of generational wealth transfers gone by the grandkids anyway. And, you know, we believe in heritage over inheritance. That's what we train on because that's the way to go. Um, you know, I, I think I was just at a, an event couple weeks ago, speaking at Aspire to thousands and thousands of people. And I literally just launched by saying, hey, raise your hand if you were taught money skills as a kid. Mm. Zero hands went up. Mm. And everybody realizes they don't, even if you know money well, like if you're doing well and you're really successful and you've got things figured out, it's very difficult to figure out how to transfer that to your children. So what people end up doing is they don't talk about the money stuff at all. They just try to make as much as they can, grow their net worth and have enough to pass on later. And you're missing the whole point because it's more about what we leave in our kids than to them. And so the, this money stuff, like parents don't have a roadmap at all, mm -hmm. right? We, we surveyed thousands of parents when we started this. They all said, yep, we have no idea what to do, when, how to teach them. We know they're not getting it in school, but I don't know where to start. And so most parents, they basically give them an allowance, mm -hmm. which is codependency and socialism, uh, and it doesn't work. And then they argue over chores. And then maybe they do a lemonade stand here or there. And then they get them a bank account when they hit puberty. That's like mm -hmm. the best parents know how to do. Right. And unfortunately, uh, cash and money uh, conversations don't happen in the home because um, our kids, when we surveyed them, Teenagers and young kids, we, we asked them about money. What have you learned and what do you think about it? They actually said it was the biggest conflict in the home between their parents. So, you know, intimacy and money, but the kids don't hear about the first one. That's in, in the bedroom. Right. But they hear money stuff all the time. You know, we money doesn't grow on trees. We can't afford this. Do you know how much that costs? 
Right. You know how hard I work to get you guys this and you just blow it. You right. forgot to pay that bill again. Like the, they hear this conflict and the stress and they just say, forget it. I don't want to even talk about it. And then the issue really is because now we've, you know, we've been in 10,000 schools with all of our companies. We've realized that you can't homework money. You have to make and manage real money to learn. You can't go get some debits credits sheet in fourth grade mm. and then be expected to budget for the rest of your life. It's in one ear and out the other. It just does not work. If that were true, then you and I could play Monopoly once mm -hmm. and both be real estate billionaires. Right. That's not how it works. You have to, kids have to learn with real money. They have to earn real money by creating value, right? They have to feel the pinch of spending. Mm -hmm. You can't give your kid 10 bucks to throw in the offering plate and expect them to be generous. Right. They need to give out of their own earned money. And so that's why we've really gone down this path for Gravy Stack. We're, we're the only solution in the world that actually makes it intrinsically motivating to kids. And so, you know, our funny tagline here with Gravy Stack is we're waging war on entitlement. Because, you know, what you if you don't teach the good habits, they're going to get the bad habits. Right. I mean, if you look at Gen Z, it's like yeah. the least invested generation in history. Credit card debt went up 40% for them last year alone on average. And two thirds of them think they're never going to retire. There's no social security and we're in late stage capitalism. 41% mm -hmm. think they'll never own a home. So we're going the wrong way. And this stuff has to start around the dinner table, it has to start at home. So that's what we're here to do is yeah. give that opportunity to people. I think it's, I think it's awesome. I think it's great. I, I do know that there are, you know, there are various types of money and budgeting apps um, out there. There are um, different programs, you know, websites, parents can go look at and, and research. And, and this, this is not that this is kind of, it's a, it's a tool that parents and kids can use. And it's, it's what Scott has done and his team have done is they've created it into a, a essentially a game. Yep. But it's a real life game. So it's a real life game in the sense that it uses real money. It's you can the kids can get a debit card. Those kind of things take place with this app, but there's there's games centered around it to make it a little bit more enticing to kids and entertaining and uh, attracted attractive to kids. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting that you know, this isn't, listen, when he says, you know, this isn't taught in schools, it's not. And this is not a knock on schools and the public school system, the private school system and what they're teaching and what the teachers are or are not teaching. Listen, we know that there are structures behind what has to be taught in schools. We know that that's, there are certain requirements and things that they have to meet as far as educational um, rules th that our kids have to learn. We get all that and we should, we, that's, that's respected. But what we're what Scott's saying, what I believe in is that these are true fundamental principles in life that kids should learn and they're not. And the only way that they're learning them, like I said earlier, is through experiences and their, their own parents. And both of those might be bad, meaning right. they might not be good influences for their kids to learn from. I remember growing up that my dad used, he, I mean, my dad was a blue collar worker. We lived, basically he lived paycheck to paycheck. Uh, I didn't get a lot of stuff that I wanted. Uh, I had to do chores. I had, I had a little allowance. I had, you know, if I got certain, if I got a certain grade in school, I got a certain, you know, dollar amount for that grade. Right. So I got those sorts of things in school. Um, but I remember and this is so weird that I remember this, but I remember I had a, I had a good friend of mine, his dad lived up on the top of this mountain and it was the only house up there. And it was on this, it was off this freeway and it was the only house up there. And I used to say to my dad, when we drove, I go, look at where his, his name is Steve. I go, look where Steve's dad lives. And he goes, yeah, you know why he lives there? And I go, why? He goes, cause he owns half the city. Like he owns real estate in, in, in the city. Like he owns half the city as far as real estate goes. I go, how did he do that? He goes, he didn't spend his money when he was younger. He saved it. He constantly saved his money. He did not spend it on frivolous things. He didn't go out and party. He didn't do all those things. He saved his money. So that way, when he could buy real estate, he started buying it and look at him now. And that's what you yeah. should do. My dad told me, that's what you should do. You should save yeah. your money. You should save your money. And I'm thinking to myself, yeah, but I'm a kid and I want things and I want to do things and you're not saving your money. Mm. So, I mean, you're telling me to save money, but you're not 
living what you're what you're preaching, right? That's right. That's right. And uh, so that's just one of my stories. And then the other one is it's interesting. When I was, as I told you, I was driving my wife to to drop her off at the school where she teaches, and we were talking about money not being taught in schools. And she said it's interesting. You're right. Uh, she said we do have certain you know things that we have to you know do as far as teacher goes and what we teach. We have certain rules and 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 there's a there's you know a guideline that we have to go by. She teaches at a private school. She said, but I have implemented a project for my kids, and actually they're presenting today because it's um, where we're when we're recording right now. When you're watching this right now, what we're recording, it's actually the Friday before Thanksgiving. So she said today's their last day before they go on Thanksgiving break, and she said they all have to present today. But I gave them a project, and their project this last week was I gave them a list of items that they had to buy or pretend to buy for the Thanksgiving meal. And mm -hmm. so it was a list of basically ingredients and all the things that they need for Thanksgiving. And what I it challenged them to do was I challenged them to look up, you know, go to stores, look at prices of all these ingredients and try to try to buy all these ingredients at the lowest cost, meaning the cheapest, you know, whatever the cheapest cost was to get all these ingredients. And that was, that was the challenge for these kids. So now they all have to present and then, you know, whoever has the lowest, you know, spent the least amount of money to buy yeah. all these ingredients will win. I think that's great because that does awesome. teach the value of money, but you know, it's not tangible. That's just, that's just a fake game, right? It's not tangible. Whereas yeah. your application is tangible in that it's real money and it's a real, it's, I mean, it's real life, right? Yeah. Um, so I, I think that's great. Um, I just want to share those two things with you. Um, well, I think, you know, it, when I think about this issue, um, kids learn in two ways, fun and real life experience. Mm -hmm. That's it, actually. And when you when you combine those two, fun makes it intrinsically motivating. Mm -hmm. Now they're self-motivated. You don't have to push a boulder up a hill. And if it's real life experience, now they're getting practical skills and capabilities that they can repl replicate into the future, which gives them true confidence, inner confidence, right? And it's difficult in schools to combine fun and real life experience, right? right? That's why my wife was a teacher. Like this is an issue that everybody has in school. So when it comes to financial concepts, we created something called the home economy system inside of Gravy Stack. And it's all of our basic principles to teach kids all of our core money skills. And it's fun and it's intrinsically motivating and it's real life experience. That's the point. If you can move over that line where the kids are self-motivated to learn these things, now your home life is incredible with your kids. In fact, someone texted us yesterday by using Gravy Stack. They said, um, I stopped nagging my kids to do the chores and they've stopped nagging me for money and stuff. That's what this system can do. And so I'll just explain it real quick. Yeah, this, is, this is the home economy. So allowance we know is not the answer. It's like, you just got salaried kids that time and effort, that's all they care about. And they just get money for existing. That doesn't work. And you don't want to just pay for a list of chores because half those chores you shouldn't pay for. Mm -hmm. you, you should never pay your kids to make their bed and clean their room and dishes trash. Those are expectations in the home. And then the other half of those chores, you're going to gripe and complain and argue over until they get them done. Why not create a system where they have an unlimited amount of things they can do to help in the home to earn but then you got to give them to cover expenses, right? If you give your kids expenses to cover in the house, toys, trinkets, tech, social outings, clothes for uh, school or sports equipment, or um, if you're going to go on a trip, that's on you. If you're going to do birthday presents for your friends at their parties, that's on you. Like give them expenses to be in charge of. And now they have a motive to earn, to do more gigs around the home, to do things in the community to help. This is what gets kids to move through. So we created the home economy system. So in the app, it's all automated. You set up the account for the kid, they get their debit card and every dollar they make in the home gets auto split into saving and investing, sharing and spending. So now they're watching the flow of money and how to immediately split that money, right? Mm -hmm. Because most kids think that if they make 20 bucks, they get to spend all 20. Mm -hmm. And that's not what you wanna teach. You wanna teach them how to split up that money automatically so that they have their buckets. Okay, so the home economy has three E's, expectations, expenses, extra pay, opportunities. Mm -hmm. So you start with, all right, kiddos, here's your expectations. 
This is what you're doing for free. This is your role in the family. Okay. If you want to keep our last name, <laughs> this is what you're doing. <laughs> so it's uh, making bed, cleaning room, get your homework done first, dishes, trash, things like that. Starting your day off the right way. And then you have expenses. Expenses are things you start passing off to them. Starting at age six years old, you should be giving them things to be planning ahead for. This is how they learn to budget. Mm -hmm. It's how they learn the price of goods mm -hmm. and trade-offs and goal setting and delayed gratification. Mm -hmm. You're in charge. You know, I love having parents say, hey, if you want to go on these things with your friends, it's on you. You know, if you're going to go to this birthday party, you're going to buy the present. We'll help you wrap it, but it's on you. Now the kid's going to go into that birthday party and run up to the kid and say, open this right now. I want to see your face. That's a generous kid for mm -hmm. life because it's their own hard-earned money. Instead of the parents doing everything, and then the kid just chucks the present on the table and doesn't even think twice about it, right? right. So if you start giving them expenses, toys, games, trinkets, um, all those types of things they want to get, have that be on them. And now they're motivated to earn, which is the, three, the third E, extra pay. So in our app, we have gigs. And this is on top of the expectations. It's things for a few dollars they can do anytime around the house to make extra money. Sweep the garage, make a meal, wash the windows, you know, sweep the common areas, yard work, you know, pack the car for the family trip, cancel subscriptions that we don't want. We have an endless list of just brilliant ideas that parents never thought about. Laundry. Like how many people are doing laundry for their kids all the time? Mm -hmm. Okay. These should be like really simple gigs so that the kids can earn a few dollars to then cover those expenses. And now you are on fire in the home. The kids are literally finding things to do to help out around the house that you never thought they would ever want to do because now they have expenses to cover. Mm -hmm. But we don't just stop there. We added brain gigs into the mix. So brain gigs are things that kids can use their brain to do to earn a few extra bucks by creating value. So you and I, our brain is our business, right? Why aren't we teaching our children to use their brain to make money, to create right. value? So this is now we add that into the, our gigs list of a podcast, a book, an article, a TED talk, a PragerU video. How about no sugar for a week challenge? Just fun things that they use their brain to learn. And they say what they've learned, two things they learned, one thing they're going to apply to the real world right now. And it's a gig. It's right there in the app. And they get paid for it. And so now they see the whole thing is fun. Doesn't matter if it's an action gig or a brain gig. Now they're just helping around the house 24 seven. The number one thing we hear from families is my kids stopped. We had no more arguments over chores. I'm not nagging them anymore. And then they're coming up with things to do to earn around the house. And, and they stopped asking us for money and stuff all the time. It's like the bank of mom and dad's closed hmm. and they're earning. And now you know, after you do that, then you go into that neighborhood, into the community. Now they're bringing out in net revenue and they're learning all these capabilities and skills. This is the true system. This is what the best families in the world do, but we just made it automated. And these gigs repeat daily, weekly, monthly. It's just a printout for the fridge every Sunday. So they don't have to have a phone. We don't even want them on the phone very much, mm -hmm. right? You don't want them on tech too much. So we just, it's a printout for the fridge every week automatically. The kids have their payday on Saturday night. They know what they're expected to do first and they know what their expenses are to plan ahead for. So now you literally are teaching them budgeting, right? how to earn, how to save, spend, and share. right? Price of goods, trade-offs. I don't need, hey dad, I don't need those Air Jordans. I'm good with the Reeboks because I'm, I'm the one choosing, right. right? And kids love it because now they have agency. They have responsibility. They have freedom and trust from mom and dad. So our gravy stack families are on fire. I mean, there's thousands and thousands of gigs happening today, right? In yeah, the app. this is, the, I mean, this creates an independence for kids. Kids kids want to be independent. When, as they start to age, and I've talked about this many times on my show, but as kids start to age, they start to grow, they start to lose that, not lose, but start to kind of disconnect with their parents in a way that they're, it's on, it's on purpose. They're doing it on purpose because they want to be independent. They want to be their own person. They want to do their own things. And they don't, it's not that they don't love mom and dad, but it's just part of, you know, part of growing up. And this really teaches them the whole app and the and the, and the gigs and the different things. And this teaches them really independence. So 
not only is it creating kind of this independence, but it also creates ownership. It creates value in themselves and ownership within the home. So yes. now you've created a system where, yes, I have value in this home. I'm not just the kid. Now I have value in this home because I'm helping out. I'm doing these things to help keep the family afloat. I'm essentially right with the different activities that I'm doing, but also I have value in myself because, and we've talked about it before in our conversations in the past, but I'm responsible for my own expenses. So if I want to go to Billy's birthday party and I have to buy him a $25 gift, it's coming out of my pocket. Yep. If I, and you shared this story with me and I almost died laughing, but if I get a cavity yeah, because I ate too much sugar when mom and dad told me to stop eating all the candy. Yep. Now I have to pay for the cavity because I put that sugar in me, not mom and dad. And I have to take ownership, ownership of that cavity. So now I have to pay for it. So what does that yeah. teach me? Yeah. Mom and dad, I mean, listen, just let them do it. They, they, they did it. So make them pay for it. Yeah. We had, we had this dad texting me like three, four weeks ago. He's like, yeah, we just made our son pay for his cavity. It's like 280 bucks. I was like, what? He's like, yeah, he had the money in his gravy stack account and we made him pay for it as an expense. And he has been brushing his teeth and flossing three times a day ever since. Yeah. So it's about giving kids like this responsibility right. and ownership of their life. And if you do it right, man, it's just such a freeing thing in the home. You know, I had another parent texted us because we're getting feedback every day. Mm -hmm. Parents are like, this is insane. This is so awesome. Uh, we had one kid that saved the average kid, just so you know, in gravy stack saves their parents about 600 bucks in the first month, saves them <clears throat> because we have challenges and games in the app where the kids are canceling unwanted subscriptions. They're getting coupons for the next grocery run for mom and dad, and they get like half the savings. They're selling things in the garage that the parents don't want anymore. And they're you know, learning asset you know, arbitrage. They're going to garage sales and flipping right. things. And they're intrinsically motivated to do it. And even if you're not entrepreneurial, the kids are on, excited to do it. Because again, if you give them a motive to earn, then the, the light bulb turns on. And you have to give them expenses to turn the light bulb on. And right. so another dad just texted us. He said, you wouldn't believe it. My kid, they went through our level two in the game about earning. They learned how to flip the assets. And now the kid is making like 900 bucks a month flipping kid motorcycles hmm. like this kid's 11 years old and it's just it's so powerful when you just turn the light bulb on for your kids and you don't have to know all this as a parent you can learn along with your kids that's the beauty mm -hmm. of it you don't have to be the pro you know i think most parents what happens here's what happens most parents if they come from you know nothing and they made it Mm -hmm. um their first thing they do with their children is i want them to have all the things i never had I want them to have all the opportunities I never had. I want them to not have to deal with any of the problems I had to deal with coming up. Well, what they forget is what made you you was going mm -hmm. through all those things. Mm -hmm. And they don't realize that they're slowly entitling and spoiling mm -hmm. and creating kids that might be lazy or anxious or victims, yeah. right? And those are symptoms. Those are all symptoms of the same issue. And if you, all you have to do is set up this system and now you actually have a deeper relationship. You know, one of the, you know, online, we post this stuff. And then all of a sudden, all these people that don't have kids are like, you're, you guys are crazy. Like, what is wrong with you? You should be paying for everything for your kids and taking care of everything. But then the parent, the people that have kids are like, oh, no, no, you guys are exactly right. Like, I don't want to be spoiling and entitling my kids like this anymore. Right. And they're busy in school and sports. And so parents just try to press the easy button. So they're just paying for everything because they don't want to deal with it. And they don't realize that it's like death by a thousand cuts mm -hmm. for their kids to become entitled. So really, like all you got to do is set up the system and it's so simple to run. Like it's this is auto repeating system, mm -hmm. right? You hook up an, your, your credit card or a bank to it and it just auto pulls funds directly into your kids accounts, immediate payday every Saturday night, Sunday morning is the print out for the fridge. It's that simple. You don't have to have big checklists and whiteboards and ticket systems and point systems. We just made it really, really easy. But if you want your kids to learn the money skills, they've got to do it with real money and they have to do it with their own earned money. Okay, that's the point. And the earlier, the better. Sometimes by the age of 12 or 13, this stuff's baked in mm -hmm. one way or the other. Yeah.
right? You got to get it early. So our app starts at age six, believe it or not. My seven-year-old's doing nine gigs today. I mean, and she loves it because she's got stuff she's planning for. She has. We have a children's business fair tomorrow in the in the neighborhood. And the kids are spending all day today getting their products ready for the fair. Hmm. That's one of our other programs that led us into Gravy Stack. Now we do 2,000 children's business fairs all over the world with Jeff Sandifer. It's childrensbusinessfair.com. Hmm. Our kids have one tomorrow. We've got 250 kids coming to the park, Arcadia Park next door. And we set up tables and chairs for them. And they bring in all the customers because they invite all their friends and family. We'll have about 800, 900 customers. And they're just going to buy the kids stuff. And what a powerful gig. I mean, we, I just see it as one more gig that the kids are going to walk away with hundreds of dollars right? and incredible lessons learned. Yeah. I have a couple questions for you. Uh, that's fascinating. That's great that your uh, kids are doing that. It's awesome. I have a couple questions for you. And then uh, I don't know if this is a concern, but it might be a concern that parents may have uh, that I want to address with you. Um, yep. First, when it comes to the money, uh, I know that you said that, you know, you can put it, they, it automatically separates into different buckets, right? Yep. Can you change the app to make the percentages different for each bucket? So yep. if, if, as a parent, I want my kids to have, yes, a savings, but I also want them to make sure that they're uh, providing enough for sharing, whether they, maybe they tithe, maybe parents, you know, if you believe in, you have a, you have a faith-based family and you believe in tithing and you want to yep. tithe. So I want to make sure that my kid's spending or, or the money that he earns goes to a little bit more to more towards sharing. Uh, and that's what he means by sharing folks is, is that's that kind of thing, donating to different organizations and uh, whether you tithe or not, but it, it can do that. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the first steps in the app for the parents is swiping up and down the percentage of each jar. Got and it. you can change that at any time. Our average family right now, it's about 30% to save because the kids are setting big goals and quick goals in there. So sometimes it's a quick goal of a, a toy or something they want to do, or mm. it's a bigger goal, like a, their first phone or mm -hmm. a car, 50-50. You know, best way to do car is 50-50. Right. Whatever you save for your car will match. Um, stuff, bigger stuff. And so that goes into save. So it's about 30% on average goes there. 10% into the share jar, which is our giving platform. You can hook up to any nonprofit in America. Um, and then the rest, 60% goes into that spend jar. And the spend jar is their debit card that they can use to cover those expenses that the parents have given them to plan ahead for. Mm. And then anything left over, I love to say, hey, if you've done the basics, you're saving and investing, you're sharing, you're covering the expenses you're in charge of with your spend jar, have fun. Yeah. Go get a Mountain Dew, as crazy as that sounds. I want right. the kids to actually use their own hard-earned money, a portion of it, to get something that they really want. Mm -hmm. Like that's a good thing to right. do. Right. Because what it does is it gives them inner capability and confidence for the future. I want them to know that like, yeah, money is not good or bad. It's just a tool, right? <clears throat> if you think that money is bad, it's a poverty mindset. If you think that it'll be here today, gone tomorrow, that's a poverty mindset. But if you think money is everything, if it's your idol, it's all you care about or think about, then it's a bad thing too, okay? So money is just a tool. It's a store of value that's created. That's it. And so now I want them to understand, yeah, I can actually get the things I want after I've covered the basics. That's true financial literacy, mm -hmm. yeah. right? And so, yeah, there's just so many powerful things that, that one simple app can do to help people that don't have a roadmap. Yeah. Um, okay. This, and my follow up to that is um, when it comes to those, you know, the gigs or the things that parents can really put in there for their kids to, uh, to take on, to earn money from, I'm assuming that parents can place values on those items. Right. Yeah. So it's not like, oh, you're going to go, you're going to go pick up, you know, leaves out on the front lawn, you know, once a week or whatever it is, and you get $5. But if you pick up just two leaves on the front lawn, because there's only two leaves out there, you still get $5. I mean, you can still, you can still adjust what the, what the earnings are. Yep. Yeah. So you, the parents choose, we give a suggested price and you just toggle it up and down for each gig. And then again, those are repeating gigs. So, you know, sweeping the garage is probably a monthly gig. Making a meal could be five days a week daily. And mm -hmm. so all those repeat in the app. So they come back up every week or month for the kids to be able to do. So it's just a system in the home and you choose the price of it. But remember, if you're giving the kids expenses to be in charge of, you're not paying for that anymore. 
So you're saving, these parents are basically saving hundreds of dollars a month that they can use to then pay the kids to earn it, right? And so the parents are net positive right away because then the kids are starting to create value all over the place. I love helping my kids earn because they know that they're now in charge of things that Amy and I were paying for before. And they're learning responsibility. They're learning the financial concepts. Some parents pay a couple bucks, a dollar, a couple dollars for things. But we have a lot of parents that are, they have like 30 or 40 gigs on there mm-hmm. because they're like, our kids now are doing things we never imagined they would do to help around the home. Before it was like pulling teeth. Now the kids are asking us for more gigs to do. One of the dads just texted um, last month. His name is Ainsley with two daughters, 10 and 12. He said, our kids literally in one week, our kids went from arguing over who has to do chores to who gets to do gigs. Mm. That's what happens when you switch up this model. Mm. Okay. That is a beautiful change inside the home. You know, we have one family that is paying thousands of dollars a month to their four kids. And they're net even because they were paying thousands of dollars on their own. Well, that, right? that, that, that brings me my quite, that's what my question was coming up. Um, and here's the thing I want to, I want to just capitalize on what you just said there, uh, where you talked about chores to gigs uh, just the switch of that simple word makes it uh, much easier for kids to want to participate in. Because when you say chore, that sounds like work. That sounds like, that's like, that's like a negative word, a chore. More right? homework. Right. Yeah. But when you say gig, that's something you get to do. That's, that's a, that's an entertainment or that's a fun value. There's a fun value behind it. Right. So right. I think just changing that word is powerful. Uh, number two, that, and that was what my co- next question was, is like, okay, Great, Scott, as a parent, that's fascinating. That's awesome. I think it's great. I really want to start applying this. But here's the thing. We live paycheck to paycheck as it is. And Mm -hmm. if I start doing this and my kid is like totally on board and loving it, I can't imagine that, you know, every, you know, the set, the the next Saturday comes up and he's earned a thousand dollars and I don't have a thousand dollars to pay him. Like, Mm -hmm. what do I do? Because I, I want him to enjoy it. I want my child to enjoy it. I want my child to do all these things that they want to do to earn money, but I don't know that I could give him all the money that he wants to earn. Yeah. So this one is where the community gigs come in. So let me explain the four stages of earning. Okay. Because again, if you're paying your kids things that you were paying for before, you're still net even, right? But what if your kids are on fire to help cover grocery coupons? They're going to save you money. What if your kids are learning through the app to flip things in the garage that you guys don't want online safely? That's extra money. Canceling subscriptions you don't want or need. This is a challenge in the app. That saves you money. There's another challenge that's the eat in versus eat out challenge where kids are making the meal at home versus going out and eating. And the average family saves 70% by doing that. Now the kids stop asking to go out. That saves you money. And then when you add in community gigs, where they've learned the capabilities and skill sets at home doing gigs with you, now they could just apply that to the neighborhood. Spraying addresses, raking leaves, you know, mowing lawns, babysitting, washing cars. We have 135 ideas where a kid can make $1,000 on a Saturday, for goodness sakes. That is what we want our kids to learn. So a lot of parents that say, well, it's a limited mindset. It's like, well, I don't have enough money. I'm barely making it myself. I don't feel qualified to to do this with my kids. What di- what what a disservice to your children. Mm-hmm. Right? How do you think you stop this by doing this system, right? And you're going to learn a ton in the process as a parent. Right? We've helped parents a ton of parents get out of the paycheck to paycheck living just by implementing the strategies in our app. Mm-hmm. You know, the secret here is parents learn just as much if not more than the children. Right. You know, and we even have a parent elite program in there where parents are getting together once a month with a ton of other parents online and we're going over the money skills and we're teaching them, we're helping them. They're sharing best practices. They're getting better ideas ideas for their own work, right? That's, that's important. We have to attack this head on. Can I ask you this when it comes to the community um, you know, the community gigs or the community activities that they could be doing um, let's say they are mowing lawns. Okay. Let's say, you know, my, my son goes out and he's, he's mowing three or four lawns for the day on a Saturday um, that person that's paying him to mow that lawn, how does that go into the app and not just him giving him the 10 bucks to uh, cash? 
because yeah. I don't want that to happen. I want it to go into that. So how does that work? Simple QR code. Okay. They can print it out and bring it with them. Or if they have their own phone, they can bring that too. It's just a text link or a QR code goes Got right it. into the kid's money machine. Awesome. Yep. Okay. That, that That's easy enough. Okay, cool. Um, and same with grandparents, by the way. So if you're listening to this and you're an aunt or uncle or a grandparent, this is a way better way to connect with your grandchildren or nieces and nephews. Give mm -hmm. them gigs. Give them brain gigs. Instead of just saying, here's a hundred bucks for Christmas or a bunch of presents that they don't want or need. Why not say every week I'm going to give my grandkids an awesome gig, a podcast, um, a TED talk, a video, a book to read, a challenge that's in there, and I'll pay for it. Now you are the kids are learning valuable things. You're getting the feedback in the gig mm -hmm. from when they complete it in the app. Mm -hmm. They'll tell you what they learned and what they're going to apply. And now you get to have great conversations with them. So so much of this is about having great teed up conversation starters. You know, we had a dad text us a few weeks ago. He said, I gave my kid in one day, it was a $30 gig. And it was four of them. It was Rich Dad, Poor Dad, the book, two podcasts, and a TED Talk that I really wanted him to understand. And he did all four gigs in one day. And he said, ever since that day, and he's done it several times since, but we had incredible conversations every dinner off of those gigs. Mm -hmm. And it was his kid was like 13, 14, maybe 15, but... Yeah. And that's the point is you want to be able to have teed up conversations with your children on the things that matter, but just parents have never had a system to easily do it. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I mean, that's cool. Uh, I think that um, when it comes to learning money skills or money principles, uh, as we talked about, it is uh, crucial that our kids start learning this at a young age. You talked about the app really being designed for six years and up, but I mean, what if they are four? I mean, what if they are five? I mean, does it really matter if it's their five or six? Yeah. I mean, so the app, just because of federal laws, okay. you, can't, you can't have it until you're six years old, but okay. we have a three to five quarter system, ages three to five. <clears throat> so one of the best things to start with, if you have young kids and you, you want them to start thinking about the monetary system as, as young as three to five years old. If you, it, the biggest mistake parents can make is they're like, well, I don't pay my kids anything. They're the good kids that do all the chores like they're told. <laughs> well, okay, good job. You know, that's awesome. You have compliant kids and they do, they work hard and you probably still have to nag and have issues and remind them. Right. But <laughs> now you're still paying for everything. Right. And they're learning nothing about money or the price of goods or budgeting or planning ahead or goals or any of that stuff. So you got to figure out something related to finances. And so with the young kids, the quarter system is brilliant. So you get a roll of quarters. Let's say you have a three-year-old or a four-year-old. You you can buy it on Amazon. It's like five bucks. It's like the three jars, save, mm -hmm. spend, share, and you just put it in the slots. Right. And every time they earn a quarter, they can choose which one they go in. And if they put it in save, you double it, you match it. It's a good little tip for young kids to see. Mm -hmm. And then what you do is every time they help, because now you're just trying to teach behavior for right. young kids. So anytime that they're helping around the house, they're picking up the toys, they do a very good like character quality with a sibling or they're, you know, they're helpful. Anything you want to reinforce, it's a quarter, right? These are like little kid gigs, mm -hmm. things that you want to reinforce that are good. And every time they reach 10 quarters, they get something fun right? They get a special time with mom and dad. They get a treat. They get a show, something fun like that. And then you also want to help them spend in their sp spend jar with the quarters to go get a fun little toy, a couple dollar toy. Okay. Right. So now they're learning the value of the quarters. But now the beautiful thing is um, if they do something wrong or there's an issue with behavior, all you have to do is say, buddy, oh, I'm so sorry. You have to go get me a quarter from your spend jar. And they're like, huh. Now they feel, now you're not having to do with like discipline and punishment and all these hard things. It's just the simple quarter system. And they're, because they earn those quarters, having to give it, you one. That hurts a lot more than, than just going to their room for That's a half exactly an hour. It. That's exactly <laughs> right. So it's one of the fastest ways to teach both like simple money skills, as well as behavior reinforcement with the kids. Yeah. A lot of our, a lot of our friends and mentors that are like the best families in the world started that really young. Mm -hmm. And then once they turn, you know, six, then they go into dollars and, you know, being in charge of bigger expenses. But yeah, that's how you set it up. 
Mm, that's great. Um, now, when it comes to you and your 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 spouse and and your kids, um, you and your spouse are on the same page as far as how to implement this app with your own kids. I know that there are, you know, there might be parents. I know, I know a few myself, uh, but there are parents out there that, you know, maybe the the dad thinks, yeah, I want my kid to learn responsibility, the value of money, and all those sorts of things. And then the wife says, oh, well, I was raised where my parents provided everything. For, I want to make sure we're doing that for our kids. Well, now you've got this roadblock where you guys are just at a, you know, a, basically a standstill of like, which way do we go? Because the dad wants to use the app, and the mom says, no, we, I need to, me to. Sh- apply or give things to our kids that want them because that's how I was raised. Yeah. So now, now, a, now what do we do? Yeah. Um, this is an incredible tool to align spouses. It's also an incredible tool for co-parenting, by the way. Like the worst thing that happens in co-parenting situations when they're divorced is kids go to mom, they bribe, coerce, and buy their love for mm. days on end so they can have a better time than with dad. And then they go to dad, dad tries to one up. So it's this constant spoiling and entitlement that goes on. And so if they can get on the same page on this one little thing, it protects the children. Mm -hmm. It literally wages war on the entitlement and fixes the whole system. Now you're not able to use that as a, as a, as like a, a tool, a bribery tool. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you, and we still are fans of like, Hey, go out to dinner. Hey, go on trips. You know, you can pay for things for the kids. What we're trying to do is give them as much of this, like these iterations as possible to learn the responsibility. Okay. It's not like a a solid cutoff, tough love from here on out. We're not paying for a thing. It's not like that, but you just, you systematically have certain things that you always want them to be planning ahead for like two or three things that they want to buy. That's it. It's that simple because then they're learning to be responsible on their own with money. So if parents don't, they come, and everybody comes from different backgrounds, by the way, everybody does. Right. But what you're trying to stop is when, you know, kid goes to mom because dad says no, and then they go to mom and try to get the yes. Or mom says you can't have this. And then they like literally, they they pit them against each other by secretly going to dad and say, well, mom said I could, you know, we want to stop all of that because that causes a lot of strife in the home. And especially when your kids ask you for stuff, you want to have an answer. Because you're, it's a, it's a lose lose if I ask if a kid comes, hey, daddy, twenty dollars. Right. That's a lose lose. If you say yes, you're spoiling slowly over time. If mm-hmm. you say no, you're the bad guy. Right. Well, now all you have to do is be like, all right, buddy, let's go look at the list. What do you got? I, I want to support and help you. Let's go. Let's figure it out. So now they can go right to the gigs list and figure out what they got to do to get there. My favorite thing is when kids go to the parents and say, hey, dad, I've got this coming up this weekend. So I need X amount after I save and share. So I want to do these four things today. What an unbelievably responsible answer, right? right. right. That's what we want as parents. Mm-hmm. And so that's what spouses need to get to that point. Once you get there, it's actually so much more peace in the home. Yeah. So much less of the fights and nagging and issues. Yeah, I think that's so good. Uh, so good. I, I love this. I love that the, the concept. I love the app, that just everything about it. Uh, and that's why I was really excited to uh, to have you on and, and get to know you a little bit because um, it's just it's just awesome. And I hope that parents apply it. I hope that parents look into it, uh, use it. I mean, you guys are you guys are talking to schools too. I mean, you guys go to schools and teach teachers how to how to teach these this stuff to to their students. Um, yeah. which is also another great opportunity for any teachers out there or principals out there that maybe that watch my show or whatnot. This is a great idea that can help not only your teachers, but also the students. And in turn, it helps the family and it makes the family better. I mean, it's just an all around win-win for everybody. So uh, if there's any parents or teachers out there, uh, principals, anybody that's related to a school in some sort or fashion, you guys can always go to the links that are in the show notes and and uh, check it out. But Scott, best place for my parents to, uh, I say parents, best place for you know my viewers to look you guys up, learn a little bit more about you, best places for them to do that. Yeah. So uh, gravystack.com or just go into the app store and you can download the app right away. Um, if you type in uh, dinner 30, you can get 30 days for free. It's a couple bucks a month. Oh, awesome. Um, but again, your kids are saving you hundreds in the first month. So the return on this is massive long term. We wanted to have parents not have to come out of pocket because there's so many games that actually save them money and help the kids grow. 
Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, we'll, we'll give you 30 days free. It's called uh, gravy stack in the app stores. You'll see it on there. Um, and then yeah, value creation kid is our book. You can mm-hmm. grab that on Amazon. And then if you want to uh, follow me, it's just, I'm Scott Donnell across all socials. Cool. Uh, well, awesome. Awesome. I, I appreciate you being on Scott. I really appreciate uh, getting to know you and I'm looking forward to uh, continuing our friendship and uh, hope that I can uh, provide value for you guys any way possible other than just this podcast. So uh, thank you for being on brother. I really appreciate it. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Hey guys, this has been another awesome episode of Dad Up. Listen, you guys need to go check out Gravy Stack. Go check out the app. Uh, go to the website. You can download the app there or just go to the iTunes, whatever it is you get your apps and download it and learn about it. You can also get their book, Value Creation Kids on Amazon. As he said, all those links are in the show notes. And not only that, he offered 30 days free on the app. So make sure you guys take advantage of that. And you can do that with the link in the show notes as well. Um, as always, um, Thank you guys very much for tuning in. Thank you guys for watching. And if you have not yet subscribed to my show, please make sure you do that so you don't miss any of the awesome guests that I have on each and every week. And I look forward to seeing you all on the next episode of Data. Wow, another amazing episode in the books. So much was shared and I'm truly grateful my guest was able to pour into you to help you elevate your dad game and really dad up. Make sure you bang that subscribe button so you don't miss a single episode. And while you're here, please don't forget to leave me a rating and a review. I always appreciate the feedback. And one last thing, don't forget, your role as a dad is one of the most important roles you have. So if you need a little help or have questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me on my website at daduptribe.com or at my Instagram page at daduppodcast. Until next time, everyone, dad up.